In today's tutorial, we will talk about passing IDs to other pages. If you remember from our previous tutorial, we went through routing and everything and I talked about for the next tutorial, I will show you how to pass an ID. And you'll see right here on our homepage, I set up two products. Let's pretend we have a page that's selling two products, a hoodie and a mug. So when we click on this hoodie, we want it to show us more details about this hoodie to give us the size, the color, to give us uh, the price on it and how to purchase it. And how we do that is when we click on it, we want it to direct us to the product and pass in an ID. So for example, this is linked to a product with an ID. So if you look at this code right here, this is what we have. I set up a product box right here with some CSS. Very simple with a link in here. It directs us to the product with an ID. Here are the two images. This has a different ID for the mug. And if you scroll over here, I just linked up the image right here inside my assets. I have two images in there. I require it. And it would go here. I'll show you inside the assets folder. I have the two images right here. And this is in our home.js because this is our home page. And so what we need to do is to uh, create a page for the product here because we are sending parameters to it. So in this video, I'm going to show you three different methods. Uh, the first one here is going to be called use params. And then the second one I'll jump into is called props. And I went over that in a little bit in the first tutorial, but we'll go over props in detail. And then the very last is use context. And that's very important too. So stick around. We're going to get right into this. Hey everyone, it's Kota Kai. I hope you've been enjoying these React.js tutorials. Make sure you hit the like button so that YouTube can share it to more people out there who's looking for these type of tutorials to help them out with programming. So if you guys want to see the CSS around this, I just added it to the app.css right here. It's just a product box and very simple with the product image and stuff. And I just put a little border radius around it. That's why it looks like that. Very simple CSS stuff. But uh, right now, let's create our routing for this and the page for this product. So let's go to our router.js right here. And let's go down here. If you remember right now, we only have a route to our home page, which is this right here. And then we have a route to the contact. So we need to create a route for the product, right? So let's go into our file here and create a page and uh, add a page here. I'm going to call this product details. Js. You can call it products if you want. I'm just calling it products detail. So let's create the skeleton of this very simply. Export default function product details. Let's just create this really quick. The skeleton return. And then in here, let's see, I'll put h1 like I always do product details. And then let's set up the route for this right now. So let's import it. Let's go up here and import, import product details right there. It found it from our pages. And then let's set up the route, route path equals. So we can call this, I'm going to call it product, right? Because I want to show you that you can just call it anything. Even though you create a page that's called something else, you can just still call it product. But right here, I'm going to show you, we can accept in a parameter, like an ID. So whatever the parameter you call it, this is what we're going to use ID, right? I can also call it like PID or something and I'll show you. But right now I'm just going to call it ID element equals. That's going to be our product details, right? Right there. So now that we have the path, we're accepting in an ID. Let's go back to our product details, right? Right up here, we need to import use params from React Router DOM. Right there, found it. And then inside the function here, we need to say const params equals use params. Just like that. And I'm just going to show you how to call it really quick right now. Inside this p tag, I'll just say the product ID is, and then we just call it params.id. So remember what I said with the params. If we called it PID, then we just call it PID. Just like that. But since we're accepting it as ID, then we call it as ID. So let's see that work. We're going to save this product details page, save the router. Oh, I always forget to end the tag. See, and this is why I always say put in your, your block tag right here to make sure that it's inside of this, the fragmented segment right here. So that's why I always like to set everything up before I do it. So I don't forget. Okay, so um, here we go. We're going to click on this. It's going to go to the product 
page right here and you see it said product ID is 143 because that's the ID I assigned it for that now this one I assigned uh, I think 486 so we'll click on that and see 486 so it's taking in the parameter so that is the deal with use params very useful because you're gonna see this a lot in creating uh, websites that take in products and you need to search the database so since we took in an ID here realistically we will take that ID search our database get all the information for this product and then we can display it on the page and that's how it works okay so I decided to show you a uh, an example of how this would work uh, while using a database so let's say we click on the product it passes to our product detail page with the ID so realistically you will be searching a database so I set this up right here uh, I set up let product data equals no initially we have our params right here and let's say that we search our database with this ID because we have the params.id here. So we're going to search our database. I'm just doing an if statement so I can pull in this data. Uh, we're going to search the database and the database should return us an object just like this with all the data for this info. For instance, like the name of it, the hoodie, the price, and the image for it. So this is like what my database would return, right? So the database returned the object and then we can use that in here. So let me just set this up here. And then I'm going to do a short code on this. I'm going to say product data. If product data is not equal to null, right? Because we initially set it to null here. And then we search the database and we found something. So I'm saying if it's not null, we found something. Then return the, uh, the data. So I'm going to set up the image. Source equals product data dot image. Where is this coming from? Product data right here. Dot image. There's the image. Alt equals product data. Dot name. I'll just use that for the name. Width equals 400. Give that width. And then let's give the details on this. Uh, inside our H2 tag here, I'll say product data. Dot name. And then let's give the price for it. Product data. Dot price. And so that's if there is product data. So this is saying if product data is not null, do that. Otherwise, if it is null, return nothing. So let's see, we have all that. Let's save this. Now I'm going to click on this and it's going to give us more info on this product. There we go. Product is still showing this up here. The product ID is 143. Here's the image that it's outputting. It found the, the data. And here's the name, hoodie, and the price, $50. So that's how you really use um, parameters, how you pass parameters to different pages. And you do that by doing this right here, use params. Oh, there is one last thing I want to mention here. Let's go back to our router.js. So since we only routed to this page with a product ID, uh, let's say if I just go to the product page alone here without the ID, it will break. See, there's nothing here. So what you do is you have to create another route for that page, right? So you can create multiple routes like this and one that just goes to the product page just, just like that and you can use the same product details or you can create a new page for it uh, called products.js or something but that's how you create multiple routes for different pages and let's see here if i just save that see it goes to the product details and nothing was in there so you can create multiple routes all right, let's jump to props because I want to go over this in a little bit more details. We're going to uh, use the app.js page right here to show you how to use props. So take a look at this right here. Uh, you know that our header is a separate component, right? Header.js. This page here is a separate component. So let's go to home here. It's also using this app.js. App.js is really running everything initially, but uh, for displaying all this right here is using the home.js but let's say if I want to pass something to the header because that is a separate component how do we pass data to the header because the header is in the router right here the router is wrapping everything in the header it puts in our content and then it does the footer so how do we pass data to this header because like let's say I have an example right here we see this all the time in uh, websites where there's a shopping cart and let's say I want to put a shopping cart up here with a number right inside the header. So uh, let's go up here to our app. I'm going to say uh, const cart equals, and I'll just give it like, uh, you know, a number here, right? There's two items in here. I'll say cart items. We want to pass that through here. Let's say cart items equals cart items. 
Uh, we can call this whatever we can just say cart or something this cart items is referencing this right here i uh i went over this in the first tutorial so just remember that but to make it easy i'll just call it cart items like that we can call it the same thing now i'm passing this to the router let's go to the router and inside the router here we need to take in the props and now that we took in this props here we can use it all inside this whole function so i can pass it now to the header so i can just say now cart items equals props dot cart items because it took in that prop of cart items from this right here it took in this prop right here cart items so now we're passing it through now let's go to the header and in here let's create a thing here called cart and um the header see we're already taking in a props and i can call it now props dot cart items so if we save all this let's go to app save that save the router save the header look at that it passed it all the way through so how does that work we can only pass data from parent to child we cannot pass data from child all the way up upwards it only goes downstream so since we are in the parent here app we're passing car items as the data to the router the router here is um, the children and then in here we're taking it as a props and then we're passing it to its other children which is has the header we can pass it to the outlets we can pass it to the footer we can pass it all through here if we want we can now pass this props.cart items throughout all of its children and then inside the header we can accept it as a prop again and then we can call it but if i modify this props.cart items inside this this header in this children i cannot pass it back i cannot pass it back to the router cannot pass it back to the app it only goes downstream so that's how you use props and uh, i'm going to show you here why props is only good sometimes because let's say if i have this cart right and i'm passing it to the header but let's say i'm on the products page let's say i'm on this products detail page and i also want to show the cart like how much items in the cart right so like what do i what do i do do i pass the the props through the header here and then i go down here then i pass it through another prop in here right is that what we do do i just say like cart items equal props dot cart items like that you can but that's not clean that's not how you want to do things so this is going to transition us into the next thing called use context so let's go over use context all right so you'll see right here i removed the cart item stuff i removed all the prop stuff and i'm going to use this thing called use context let's go into our components folder here I'm going to create a new file called context.js. Inside here, we're going to do import create context. That's right, from React. There we go. Create context from React. And let's do a const context equals create context. We want to call that function. We're going to undefine it, right? And then let's export that. Export default context. So we have that file. Let's save it we are done with this file let's close it up we're back into our app.js and this is where you're going to see it's going to be very useful so first let me create this right here i'm going to create a const user info equals I'm going to create an object with a uh, user inf information like my user data so let's say you logged into a website and you look up your user data right quarter kai at gmail.com logged in true cart items let's give it four this time so let's say yeah we logged into our website we pull our user information using our user id and anything and we pull that from the database now we want to pass it once again like i said we pass things from the parent to child so we're going to do this um, context right here so let's import our context import context down here it found it nope not that one we want to import our context from components slash context. There we go. So we import that. Let's go down here. So context, there we go, dot provider. And we're going to give it a value equals what value? User info. Oops. And then we wrap all of that right here slash context provider. So why are we doing this? Remember how we uh, used that props 
from parent to child. So now this is the parent passing information to the child. So that's why we're doing this user uh, context thing. It's passing the context value, which is user info data to its child. And the child here is the router, which provides it throughout the whole app because we have everything inside the router. So let's save this right here. And then I'll show you now, you don't need to go to this router. You don't need to do anything here with the use context. It's it's now provided to all of these components. We'll just go to the header. Let's go to the header here and then we import. So inside the header here, we want to import use context from React. And then we also want to import context from our component context here, context. And since we're inside the component here for the header page already, the context file is right there. So now that we have that, we want to call it now. We want to say const user data equals use context right there. Use context right here. And we want to use that context that we uh, created. That is the context we created right here, context provider. We are using that context now in this page. And then we can use it. So let's call it right here. User data dot, was it cart items? So let's see, we save that, we save this, and there we go. We pulled the data over, cart number four. And so you'll see that um, if I go to the products details page here, we can do the same thing. Let's copy this and copy all this, go down here. And since we are in the pages, we want to go out to and go into the components folder for the context. So now right over here, let's say const user, what was it user data equals use context. And we want to use that context that we imported. We're going to use that context. And then down here, P, we'll say cart items, user data dot cart items. So let's save that. Let's click on our data here and boom. See, we pass cart items to this uh, product detail page and we also have it in the header. So you see how it's all global now. It, we can use it throughout the whole page because we set it up here and we made this the parent passing the data to this, its child and the children are all of these pages. And as long as we import use context and this context file, we can call it. We can call the data now. So you see how powerful this use context is. So there you go. I gave you three different options, use params, props, and use context. And you can see how useful they are in different situations. You have to use the params up here. We're passing IDs, use context if you want to use it in multiple pages. And then, you know, there's a certain time to use the props if you like. But like I said, um, that one, you have to keep passing it to other components as you're using it. So I really like the use context is, is more global. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you like this one. Share it and I hope it's helping you out on programming in React. Uh, I will figure out the next one to do for the next tutorial here in React. Um, I might jump into use state and use effect because I know that's very important as well. Or I might jump into forms, actually. Maybe I'll do forms and show you how to generate forms. Because, you know, with the forms, you're still passing the data the same way. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Code Kai out.